as far as the combat aspect of the martial arts of what you mentioned the the reality is going to be different for different people that live in different countries different states and also basically based on your lifestyle um, for me I live a very peaceful life I stay home a lot you know and I don't go to bars I don't go to clubs I don't place myself in environments of where I'm going to be surrounded by people that are highly intoxicated all the time or or I don't put myself in areas of where it's very violent so I really do not ever see myself having to result in using my martial art techniques that I've been training in for all these years um, so my reality is different than a lot of people but if you are a police officer you will have a different reality if you are a, a bartender or if you're a, a, you know um, if you work in a bar for sec in, in security you, as a bouncer you will have a different reality if you live in a very rough neighborhood you will have a different reality um, if you're in high school and you're around a lot of ignorant you know kids then you have a different reality if you live in Indiana you're gonna have a different reality because over there they're allowed to carry concealed weapons concealed firearms so different different states are allowed to some states allow concealed firearms and really Chicago is a very violent city so living in Chicago um, is a different reality than living in somewhere maybe like Kentucky where it's maybe not as violent so you really have to be aware of you know the environment that you live in the laws established for your environment for your state for your country you know as you said in England it's difficult to get firearms so um, there's not that many killings that go on with firearms then that's a different reality then maybe unarmed martial art combat techniques will be more practical and more realistic so in in your case you know if you if you walk around you see fights happen often and a lot of times it's unarmed fights and unarmed combat then yeah you know martial art training techniques can be extremely beneficial for real life use you know so every person's reality is different and that's one of the main components of my art of what I teach is that everybody's gonna be different depending on their lifestyle and depending on their body type and just their expression of the martial art is gonna be different so you know people have to be trained in different ways and the only person that's gonna know the best way to to train is you and basically if by you making that decision you will formulate your your workout plan in order to benefit you the most you may put martial art training at a higher priority um, than somebody else like me you know where the the the, the, um, the actual um, use of the martial art techniques is not too practical based on my lifestyle um, so I would focus a lot more on fitness development um, but for other people where they're in a higher chance of being in a situation of where they're going to have to protect themselves they may put a lot more emphasis on on combat training um, police officers will put a higher emphasis on firearms training you know or people that that are lawfully able to carry firearms will put more high emphasis on firearms training all right so it really depends on you on how you live your lifestyle your environment state laws and things of that nature that will determine how important combat training is for you but I really do believe that everything usually boils down to being peaceful and being able to adapt to the situation and being able to calmly what I believe is important that is you're able to calmly assess the situation in order to determine the best response and a lot of times it will not have to result in fighting so for example an officer many times will have to calmly talk his way out of a dangerous situation um, in order to get the person to comply a lot of times it's gonna it's more effective to use um, just 
more of a respectful um, way of you know having the person comply you know with your your demands you know as a citizen you know somebody's sticking you up for your wallet rather than fighting the person you might just give them the wallet that might be a better option rather than trying to take the gun away and things of that nature a lot of times a lot of these fights are over stupid ego you know trips about or like people trying to you know basically protecting their egos people that say hey you know I'm better than you and then you say no you're not and then you guys fight you know that's just ridiculous you know it could just be like you know that person thinks that he's better than you he says oh I'm better than you then just say fine you are and then they're happy you know it's just um you know so, so for example these cage fighting things that you know they're provoking the fights you know by saying you know I'm better than you no you're not you know, I'm better than you you know you're not better than me and then they fight that's just ridiculous and things that go like that a martial artist will be able to just assess the situation and just allow the person to just have that ego fulfillment it's not a big deal um, it's not worth fighting over ego okay um, there may be a situation where you're at the club and you have a girlfriend and another guy grabs the butt of your girlfriend so in that case what are you gonna do are you gonna fight the guy or you know things like that it's just um to me it's it's not worth fighting over the ego your pride basically is not worth fighting over but what is worth fighting over is when you're truly in a dangerous situation like truthfully in a dangerous situation so for example you know you got you know some of these gunmen you know like the Virginia Tech incident for example would be a time where you had to fight for your life another example would be you know the most recent one that I heard of is where this guy went to shoot the judges and and all these people out of nowhere there's or there's other cases of where people just bring guns to the mall and start shooting people for fun those are cases of where you will truly have to fight for your life and that's what I'm saying is that's what martial art is supposed to be for um, times when your life is truly on the line not because somebody insulted you not because somebody's you know trying to prove that they're better at punching and kicking than you that is not reasons to fight you know that if you do fight because of those reasons it's because of your lack of spiritual development in the martial arts and your lack of understanding of why you you know you should be training um, you know for a woman that's getting raped for example that is a time when she will have to fight for example you know things when you're in true danger is when you will have to fight another example is when you see women they always have like a higher life expectancy than men and living in this violent society how are they able to do that they're women they're a lot weaker than men but yet they still find a way to live longer than men you know a lot of it has to do with you know being a lot less stressed okay they're not that they're not as strong as men but they still live longer and if they're not as strong then that truly indicates also that martial art really the combative aspect of the martial art is not really needed for survival what's what's more important is um, yielding and women are able to yield so say you have a woman she's not a threat because she's just a woman she's not trying to assert herself assert her ego and try to prove that she's better than somebody in fighting she's a woman but then you have a man who trains in martial arts or trains in fighting goes around challenging people all the time always trying to fight people always trying to pick fights and bully people then he's gonna live you know he's gonna get in a lot of fights he's gonna get injured more and he's gonna probably end up dying early and that's because of the way that he is he's very aggressive so yielding will give you more life but if you're always aggressive and 
fighting, then you're gonna die earlier. You know, it's just like, for example, you could live a peaceful life just working a regular job, 9 to 5, and live until you're 100 years old. Or you could, at the age of 18, join the army and then die early by going to war. You know, going to the military and the army is like into the martial art, training in the martial art and expressing it in the wrong ways. Or you live a more peaceful life. Say you don't even practice martial art, you might dance or you might sing or you might paint. Then you just don't even deal with any of that combat training. There's a good chance you live a lot longer. If you practice martial arts and you express it in a peaceful way, then there's a good chance you'll live a lot longer. But if you start practicing martial arts you know, in unhealthy ways and you start expressing it in unhealthy ways, then yeah, you probably die early. And this doesn't have to do with just martial art. It could be something like, you know, professional, you know, playing football. You know, you play very aggressively and you're constantly hitting people and people are hitting you. And then it's a good chance you're going to die early. I mean, that that's what happens when you put yourself in dangerous situations. And men are typically always the ones to do that. Whereas, how many women do you know that practice football, that play football? They don't care for it. They'll do something else. They might play soccer, which is a lot less damaging to the body. So then they'll live longer. So, you know, I think that a lot of times these these men with this big ego and all this pride, they, they destroy their bodies in these ways. They're not benefiting themselves at all. They're just making it worse for themselves. They're, they're lowering their life expectancy. And I think that's a very unintelligent thing to do. I believe when you watch videos, you should always, you know, aim to watch videos of where it will serve to inspire you to better yourself, body, mind, and spirit. Um, some of these videos, people will purposely put a lot of a lot of ego into it and, and make you want to be competitive. I'd say, like, you know, you could try to stay away from those types of videos because it could really generate some very, um, you know, desires within yourself that are that can set you that could set you back that can make it um, wasted energy you know I mean an example is someone like Bruce Lee he's just very charismatic and he was one of the first martial, martial artists that would openly take off his shirt and just show all the, the high definition of his muscles and the cuts and everything basically the bodybuilding aspect of the martial art but really the truth about it is that in order to be a good fighter it's not about how cut your muscles are that's just bodybuilding and then um it could be very unhealthy to just train yourself to be so cut and by him doing that it could have you know and it did it to me as well it can motivate a lot of people to 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 train in very unhealthy ways in order to get so cut i mean to to weigh only 125 pounds at five foot seven and a half that's very unhealthy that's not good to be so skinny you know okay you're cut you know but you, you're like extremely skinny to the point where it's not healthy and that's i think would contribute to his early death you know because really when you don't drink water your muscles get more cut but you get dehydrated and dehydration causes headaches and when you get headaches that's what bruce lee had he had a headache and that's why he wanted to take the painkiller took the painkiller and supposedly his his brain got allergic reaction and then he died so what i'm saying is that like by bruce lee taking off his shirt and showing all his cuts in the muscles it could it could create the desire within the audience to strive towards an unhealthy way of training but you got someone like Jet Li for example who's a very talented martial artist as well but he would rarely take off his shirt he would always you know wear a shirt and um, wear some traditional you know martial art uniforms and in that case he would promote more of a, a healthier way to express talent where it's not about how you look but it's more about what you're capable of doing how you're capable of fighting or moving your body or moving gracefully and things of that nature.